Welcome, digital creators and visionaries. It's time to push the boundaries of realism in game design. Today, we're exploring one of Unreal Engine 5's revolutionary features, Nanite Virtualized Geometry. Imagine integrating film-grade assets with mind-blowing detail into your projects effortlessly. No more compromising on quality or complexity. Get ready to revolutionize your workflow and bring unparalleled realism to your virtual worlds. Let's dive into the future of game development with Nanite, where every detail counts and the possibilities are endless. Welcome back to Ranger Realm Studios. Nanite is Unreal Engine 5's ace for handling vast amounts of geometric data. With it, the engine can efficiently display massive, detailed environments and assets without a hitch. Getting started with Nanite is seamless. If you don't have a mesh to use for yourself, I included an unoptimized mesh for you to download in the description below. So when importing a 3D model, ensure that Build Nanite is enabled. This converts your mesh to take advantage of Nanite's system. Go ahead and then, as soon as it's enabled, import all. Unreal Engine will automatically apply the LODs to the mesh as soon as you place it inside of your game world. Now, once the mesh is imported, before we place it into our scene, let's open it up and take a look. As we can see, the nanite triangles are already set to be over 4 million and the vertices are over 12 million. That is a lot to handle for your computer, especially if you decide to place more than one of these inside of your map. So go ahead and close it once you took a look. You can ignore the arrows for now, as this is just a test model. And find the spot where you would like to place your statue. Open a content browser and simply drag and drop it in. And currently, the statue is way too big for what we want it to be. So ensure that your lock is clicked and closed and not unlocked like this. That way you affect all three values at the same time versus if it is unlocked, it will only affect one value at a time. Let's go ahead and scale it down to 0.08 which is a much more reasonable size and go ahead and move it over. And because we really want to see if this will bog down our system at all, let's go ahead and duplicate it two times. So simply hold down the alt key and then click and drag the transformation tool and this will automatically duplicate it. Go ahead and rotate a little bit. Actually, let's bring them down a little bit more so they blend in with our ground. And then let's make another one. Duplicate it and drag it out over here so they kind of stand in a circle. And once you position them to your liking, go ahead and hit play and take a look. You can see even though each of these statues has over 14 million vertices, the game does not slow down at all. That is all thanks to Nanite's virtualized geometry. Now, if you have existing assets that you would like to convert, don't panic. Simply open up the mesh and enable Nanite settings from inside of the mesh. So let's do that for some of our foliage that we already placed in our world. Go ahead and open up the content browser, find the foliage pack that we have, go to environment, landscape. Oh, that was the wrong one. Under environment, foliage. And then in here, just choose whichever foliage you would like to change. Let's go for rocks large. Find the static mesh, open it up, and then make sure over here in the details panel, enable nanite support is enabled. Save, close, and then the message will pop up of would you like to apply level of detail changes to the model? Simply click yes because you want Nanite to automatically calculate the LODs for you at this point. We'll then close it. Let's go back out there and change all of the rocks that we have, as well as some of the other foliage that we have already placed in our world. And I will see you once that's done. All right, once you changed up some of your foliage and allowed the shaders to recalculate, go ahead and save all. And hit play to take a look. And again, nothing really has changed seemingly in our world, but the geometry is gonna be much more optimized with their LODs as you get closer to the models. 
Now, Unreal provides tools to visualize Nanite's workings. Click on the View Mode drop-down up here and select Nanite Visualization and then click on Clusters. This view will show you how Nanite processes the visible geometry, helping you debug and optimize your scene. As we can see, you can see these different colored patches on our geometry, especially the statues that we placed. If we get closer, we can see that the geometry changes. That is Nanite actively recalculating the level of detail that you will be seeing from where you're standing. So as you zoom out, it will start getting bigger and bigger. As you zoom in or get closer, it will get smaller. And this goes for all of the Nanite enabled meshes that we now have in our map. So as we zoom out, the level of detail will automatically recalculate itself, adjusting to the distance that we're at which allows the computer to actually run much smoother. There's also different view modes that you can choose from in here, but I prefer cluster the best. You can also choose triangles in which we can see how many triangles we actually have on our statues, as well as the other meshes. You can also go to overview, which will then give you an unlit scene in the center, and then all of the different visualizations for Nanite in the boxes around you. Now, though Nanite is powerful, be aware of its limits. It works best with static geometry. Dynamic assets like characters or those needing deformation aren't the best candidates. However, for vast landscapes, intricate buildings, or complex props, Nanite shines. Now that you know the basics of Nanite, the sky's the limit when it comes to detail and scope. It truly is a game changer in the world of real-time graphics. Remember to use it wisely and your scenes will come alive like never before. If you found this tutorial enlightening, smash that like button and share it with fellow UE5 enthusiasts or friends that are trying to dip their toes in the vast ocean of the digital worlds. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more deep dives into Unreal Engine 5's groundbreaking features. Until next time, let your creativity know no bounds and keep it unreal.